Hello, Arnie. It is nice to see you. You know why? Because it's why? always nice to see you. But besides that, I know we're having a new lesson of Svetlana Smart Moves. And the only other thing which might not be so nice, it looks like it's an end game. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. So, yes, yeah, today uh, we're looking at, um, at some fortresses that can exist in, uh, yeah, m m in end games. Okay. I I'm, I'm very, very looking forward to that. Didn't we, didn't we have a, a lesson about fortresses once? Uh, we no, did. we didn't, but we no. had, uh, I, I explained one fortress when I was talking about material imbalances. That was so the thing. Thank that you. That might be what you remember. Do you still remember the queen and uh, knight and Yes, no? I think, yes, that was exactly the thing. Exactly. So everybody, by the way, um, you can see all the links. I've, I've renewed everything on YouTube. You can see all the links below. If you scroll down on YouTube, on the YouTube video, you can see the data, the playlist, everything. You can watch all Svetlana Smart Moves in one go. And this very episode uh, was uh, the material imbalances episode. So take a look at it now if you don't know what it is, what we're talking about. But I remember, yes, there was a certain mm -hmm. fortress, a very interesting one. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, and well, to to just define a fortress uh, for people who don't know, it's usually what we call like a drawing technique. So when one side is behind in material or um, in, a, in a in a lost position, you in an end game that side is going to try to make a draw. And usually, a fortress is such technique where you set up um, for yourself some protection zone that the opponent is not going to be able to cross and um, the opponent won't be able to make progress despite his um, some material advantage. So there are a few such uh, cases. Some of them are more well known than the others, and it's useful to know them just in case you ever have something similar in your games. You might be able to make a draw uh, instead of uh, instead of defending uh, uh, without um, without progress. So this is uh, one of the positions which I think you might have already seen. Not sure, but no? Okay, so then um, you can try to think about how we would, um, how you would want to approach this position as white. So it is white to move. And, um, and yeah, I think you, you can try to guess what, uh, what you would play. Well, immediately Bishop going to G4. With a okay. mate threat is an idea I have. And okay. I just hope that black doesn't see it, makes a very stupid move and putting the bishop to b5. And then I can uh, win the game. Even win, right? So yes. we, we don't go for the draw. I know, yeah. But so for the draw, that's much more complicated. As you all know, the board is just below. Take a look at it now. Play with us. Stop the video. This is a training. This is something where we can all learn from. So go ahead. If you have the chance to do this now, this is a very good chance. Okay, now how to draw this. So I guess my my goal is to get... I don't know, actually. It's difficult. So what happens... So your previous knowledge of um, typical... Um, drawing what? techniques might help in this. I see. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So there are some positions. The reason why I even um, wanted to show fortresses is that sometimes when you know one type of position, you can transform it into that type, which you know is a draw, let's say. Huh. So is, does this remind you of anything that you know is, uh, is a draw? Hmm. Unfortunately, not Svetlana. We'll get. Should we'll it? Get there, then. Should it? Did we have something similar? I think. I think my memory is uh, not helping me here. Okay, now let's concentrate. How can I? What can I? How? Why? I would give a check on h8. And okay, then, he's going to cover with rook c8. And then I'm going back with my rook to h2. And you're letting him just push every pawn he wants to push forever. So that's more of a slow approach. 
which um, which would uh, which oh. would actually be dangerous. I think you might even be able to lose that one. Oh no! Okay, I I'm really very clueless. This is actually so. Let's first take the let's look at the first decision. Do you want to trade rooks or not to trade rooks? Oh! Did you suddenly see it? Yes. Oh, this is, oh, this is so, oh, it's a beautiful puzzle. So everybody at home, think about this now. It's actually, I'm really stunned because I love this. It's crazy. I, mean, I would have yeah. thought you've seen something similar with Karsten. Yes, yes, yes. But also with you, I think we had something similar. So yes, of course, I exchanged the rooks because that's, mm -hmm. that's and the draw. The idea is the second move. Yes, that was bishop to a6. That is right. So this is why um, I mentioned in the beginning that it's useful to know um, the yes. typical draw setups so yep. that you can transpose to them when you have that chance. You gave me all the tips and hints and I still didn't figure it out. Right. So then. The, the idea is that if black takes her bishop, uh, then we have a very well-known drawing technique where the bishop is of the wrong color of the corner and black will not be able to win this um, because the king is just staying in the corner and eventually once the pawns advance it's it's going to be some sort of stalemate so the king just has to just has to stay here and yep. it's a pretty easy it's a pretty easy draw for white he doesn't even have to know anything yeah exactly and the pawn, you we'll can just never promote. White cannot actually do anything wrong. Right. If every He's... second move is going to be to yeah. A1. <laughs> yeah, and if he advances too much and... Uh, um, I, I mean, if Black advances a lot and tries to lock you in, then it's never going to work because of stalemates. Yeah. And as long as the king doesn't leave the corner, this is a very... Um, easy draw for White. So this is why we bring the bishop here and make sure that he has the pawns of the wrong color of the uh, of the square. So if it was somewhere on this square, then it would be different because the bishop is of the right color. Or if this bishop was dark squared, then this would be winning because then the king can be pushed out of the corner. One, so, one other yeah. important thing to notice is that this is actually only really effective because of the rook exchange since the king moved mm -hmm. to c8. Because if the king would still be on b8, there would be... B, B6, B6 and then yeah. and he saves the pawn so the whole um beauty of bishop a6 is that we are going to get the b7 pawn no matter what because if, even if the king moves then we're going to capture it and leave him with this uh, pawn which can never be promoted yeah and yeah it doesn't matter how many pawns there are on the on this rank it's still going to be a draw but that usually no more than two pawns happen to be on the third on the on the rook file. Yeah. Everything more than so. four is really awkward. And I would love to see that, but that's for a different lesson, maybe. <laughs> that's that's what, uh, that's in our studies lesson. Yeah, how to convert with five, uh, yeah. Rook what pawns. is it called? Quintet pawns? Probably something like that, yeah. Five rook pawns, yes. So, going to the mm. next one. Um, this one is also going to be with the bishops. It's... Um, it's quite an interesting. Um, it's quite an interesting for fortress. Another one, which you will be playing here from the white side and trying to guess um, what white played. But the reason why I took this one is that is that actually um, it was played by as as black. It was played by our friend Karsten Miller. <laughs> That's funny. So That's yeah, uh, it's, this position was played. He won it as black, but my um, my question is, how do you uh, make a draw here with with white? What would you play here? Do you think there can be a way to to save it? Hmm. Yeah, that's a very very good question. Yeah, it's a bit difficult here because. The... Well, first, what is black's idea? Do you think black wants to go to H? Two, I assume, and get the pawn. 
also push forward F and then G and then maybe H. F4, yeah. yeah. F4 and then G3 and create another pass pawn, right? So, okay. It's very interesting. Huh. Thinking a lot here. It's not that So simple. you don't have to get to the final fortress setup, you know, right away. You just uh, take it to step by step. Okay. So my idea is king e3. Mhm. Mm like king e3 for um to not allow f4, yes. right? And that is that is the right idea so far. Mm -hmm. Now what happens after king c5? This is the real test. Mhm. Mm this is the real test, isn't it? <laughs> what happens? What can happen? That is all a little bit of a problem. I think that's fairly difficult. I'm not sure. If, maybe it's just me. Maybe if I know yeah, it. It's, it's definitely um, very difficult to decide in a real game to do to go for this. But since uh, we're doing it in a more calm environment and you don't have to you know a mistake is not going to cost you the game um we can look at all sorts of lines and uh figure out the right one because the nice thing about end games is that they're usually you have okay two three options to choose from and mm -hmm. you don't have you don't have uh, 50 different lines to calculate like you can at in least. the middle of the game so you probably do see the right uh sequence you just don't get to the end of it okay so i'm of course worried that if the king gets the a5 pawn i am in trouble but i mm -hmm. have a bit of a problem trying to okay okay so there's one idea i have okay. what about king f4 King f4, okay so if you play this i'm going to attack the pawn with king b4 and now a6 a6, I will take. I'll take with my bishop. And? Take the pawn on f... Uh, do I? Yeah, I have to take it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happens after, let's say, bishop c8? So if I hope... Now I'm hoping, because I didn't calculate this, that I mm -hmm. am in time to go to g1, and that's game. Yeah, you got it. Oh, so wow! The king makes it to e3 just in time before the black king makes it to h2. Yes. And surprisingly enough, this this is a draw. There is nothing that black can do to really get the king out of g1. Crazy. If they get their king any closer, um, it's going to be it's going to be still it's going to be stalemate. Wh wh whatever you want to do, you can never pick up any of these pawns, and you can never make any progress with this bishop. Um, because it's only going to cover the light squares yes. and the king will just stay on the dark squares. So, yes, this was a pretty interesting draw. I think it's really hard to see in an actual game. So the yes. player with white, you know, to sacrifice, to see this in advance, this bishop sacrifice, and uh, also to evaluate that this is indeed a draw because sometimes you your brain just won't do that because the opponent has an extra piece. Um and yeah, the other line, which we haven't mentioned, was king e5, but I don't think this one was uh -huh. as difficult to draw because um, because here now f4 is not going to be that much of a threat. We're going to have time to capture it, check, and um, yes. we can just move our bishop back and forth and the draw can be decent. And whenever there's a chance, um, we can also trade this pawn and this is even even clearer draw. Um, because black, once again, cannot ever get to the h2 pawn. And if he cannot create a passed pawn for himself, there is no win. And as soon as the black king moves to get out of the check, we move our king to f4, and that exactly. seals the game too, because now we only have to move our yeah. bishop. We can actually... No, we cannot sacrifice our bishop. <laughs> we just have to move it. Oops. Don't get, yeah. too, don't get too excited, Arnie. <laughs> So in the actual game, white played bishop c4, and this ended up 
ended up losing pretty quickly after the whole F4 idea. And um, it wasn't that simple for Black to um, get there either, but mm -hmm. uh, this is the way the game ended, is that he first got his bishop to the um, long diagonal before pushing the G3. Um, and then and go to his G3 pawn, because that it makes a difference so that white cannot stop it. Yes. And after G3, there is the bishop is just not on the right diagonal uh, to defend the pawn promotion. So oh, that's so um, clever, yeah. So yeah, I just like this game because it was also uh, played by Karsten, who is known to be our end game uh, genius. So. Absolutely, yeah. Not not only mine. It he helped several people in the end game. So Karsten, if you see this, hi. Thanks for making such good work for end games. <laughs> Perfect. So I have a next example, which is oh. another case of a well-known fortress that can be made, um, or well, close to it. So my first question here is, um, are you familiar with the queen against rook and pawn fortresses? No. Okay, so the then... Slightest. So I'm then learning a we, lot will, today. we will get to it. So this position, what do you think about it? Do you think it would be winning for white or somehow holdable for black? And what should white do? Well, it's white to play, but yeah, let's let's start with this position. Yeah. What would white do? Uh, what should white avoid doing? How would this work? Yeah, very interesting. I mean... In general, if it's only queen against the rook and only kings and there's no pawns, that's a win, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, yes, it is. Actually, I, I'll show that in the next one be just because it's closely related okay, to this. Okay, cool. Okay, so now there are pawns and I think white has the problem that both of the pawns are on, yeah, on the side of the board. And that is the question if they still can have enough impact. And yeah, so I would still be in favor of white winning, but probably that's wrong. Just saying. So actually, this exact position, it is winning for white, oh. but it is because of a little detail that only works in this particular um in this particular position. So now that you know it's winning, can you try to find uh, the win? And uh, later I'll say why this is really close to a fortress, but not quite there for black. I believe h5 is almost a must to ever prevent the rook getting to g6. So h5 has been played, and that actually leads to a draw. No. <laughs> That's what happened in the game. Looks so natural. You're right, it does. Uh, David Nav Navarra is black and was like, yes. Yeah. That's a draw. Oh, pity. Okay. Um, how to do this? So what about queen b8 check? And then if the king moves up, it's... Oh, no, it doesn't help at all. That's so stupid. That was a stupid idea. Yeah, the king will stay there. So your h5 idea will be in er, incorporated just uh, one move later. So how about h3 then? So black is in... Zugzwang. What does h3 do? It's it's a Zugzwang, but I don't know why. Because... Rookie 6 is what black will play. Okay, okay, okay. Um... No, I'm, I'm, I don't know what, what to play here. So what about, okay, so let me, let me just do something. How about I move my king forward, c4? So once you move your king forward, now I will play the rook e6, rook g6 back and forth, and it should be, yeah, it, it should be a draw. Crazy. Or, well, if you move the king, then maybe you can still like have your idea for later but there's this one this is the only kind of moment where this idea works out perfectly when your pawns are exactly like that and uh, when the opponent's pieces are exactly like that only one and h5 is the second move of the sequence which should already help oh, okay so how about uh, queen e8 check and then... king g7 Okay, forget it. I, I cannot... I don't know. I really don't know. Wow, 
it's actually fascinating that I would be imagine I have a position like this and I'm like yeah I'm winning this and then I'm like how how's that working I don't know at the moment have you found it out at home very curious give me another tip is it a queen move it is it has to be a queen move of course it's a normal I moved move the king I moved the anyway. other pawn and now I'm asking if it's a queen move. That's very, very <laughs> clever, Arty. That helped me a lot. So well, yeah. just to check on G5, maybe? That doesn't... Almost. <laughs> oh, God. Queen H5? No. But, but why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Queen G3 check. Finally, we got to the right check after oh. trying every possible oh, check. Oh, okay. So, so now I see, see that the, the king idea? cannot go to h7. That's one thing I saw. Right. So the king cannot go to h7 because of the queen d3 yes. check. And we win the rook, even if it covers, there's h5. But the whole um, idea of queen g3 is that rook g6, as is black's normal defensive moves, and is now met with h5 h5 and this only works in this particular setup where you have the pawn on h2 so this of course won't happen in um other type of this position if your pawns are somewhere else um so that wouldn't happen but uh, we can have this happen or well if black doesn't take then it's already a different story of course, he can defend and not go into the lost pawn end game, but this is already a different story um, because the rook isn't at its defensive um, squares with g6 and e6, and this will eventually still be a win. That for... is crazy. I ah, uh, this is it's very beautiful. I like it, but um, and uh, the calculation is really yeah. is really long. But yes, at the end of the day, Black ends up not making it by only one tempo. So now he has this H F five move, which is I guess White's last test um, of H6. how to win this end game, and it's H six. Good thing you know it. At least so, that. F5 and king e6. Yep, and uh, yeah, I guess black was only short of one tempo to actually get the um, get the get the pawn and uh, avoid this uh, this opposition. But uh, yeah, so this win was only possible because of that. Um, wow. Because of that um, pawn being there, um, so usually the this type of ending now we get to the actual to the fortress part of it um h5 has been played which was the first move you suggested and it looks like the most natural move um now black plays rookie six and the interesting part is that um now black ended up making quite an easy draw uh because of the, um, be because of that idea, do you? But you said you're not familiar with the rook and pawn and against queen. Okay, so the way to usually draw this is um, for as black. The the fortress technique is to keep the rook on the sixth rank, and you normally want to have two squares for it. Ideally, you want e6 and g6 because it's protected by your own pawn. It's de defending you against most of the checks. Okay. And uh, so here it's not possible because of the pawn being on h5. So this does, I guess, help white a bit. But the rook has a second um, has a second square, which is on h6, which is safe most of the time. And so once the rook has two squares, that is basically enough to avoid any zugs wings or being forced to play somewhere unpleasant. So you want to not let the you want to not let the white king to get through to let's say f8. I see, yeah. And that is the only really thing to to watch out for. And in this particular case where there is actually a, an also h pawn, just watch out for some h6 advance. So the king should stay on the seventh rank for black um, and uh, prevent the h5 h6 advance, and the rest is very simple. And you would be surprised that how simple some of these fortresses are once you know them. Um, because even though there is such a big material advantage, um, there's actually 
pretty much no way to to make progress here and this position with the rook and pawn against the queen is pretty useful to know um, because i've actually seen it happen in in tournament games to people and uh yeah it's uh, nice to know that this is a draw instead of thinking you're lost and like maybe even resigning it's really something. crazy i can't believe it actually that this is um yeah I, I this would have happened to me. Of course, it would have happened to me. But now I know. Have resigned? As black, no, I yeah. would have fought, but I wouldn't have known how. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, I'm just showing the rest of the game between Lupulescu yes. and Navarra, which was actually drawn, and it's not really necessary to see the entire game. But um, just just all of these moves, as you can see, white. As much as he tries to bring the king in and change something about the position, um, you just you just can't because the rook has two convenient squares and that's all he does. Just moves the keeps the king on the seventh rank and the rook on the sixth rank, and the also typical position. Can you see the little board that I'm yes giving? So even if we move, if we remove all of these pawns. This is still a draw, and it's an even simpler draw with the rook just going from g6 to e6. Okay. And, um, yeah, so the rook stays in g6, e6, and uh, that would be okay. no matter where the king is. Because but the king can the never get through, there, yeah. Yeah, so the, and on g6 and on e6, the rook is just defended and prevents all the checks mm -hmm. pretty nicely. So that is a well-known draw, and... Um, it's uh, it's useful to know it, but this one was just a bit uh, a bit harder, and it also had that hidden little win because of the pawn placement. But yeah, so we end up with another position with the two rook pawns. Okay. Um. So yeah, the one I wanted to um to to show next was what you mentioned with the queen alone against the rook. So you. So did you plan this you know or? Huh? Did you plan this? Because well, I assumed that would, the question would arise. It's so about, cool. How funny. About, okay. the, about the rook and queen without the pawns. So, well prepared. Um, okay. <laughs> basically, you said you know that white is supposed to win this, but have you ever had this in your games? And do you really know which position we're aiming for to make it a win? Wouldn't really know. But of course, I believe mm -hmm. I have to have my king and the queen very close. But I always have a problem of stalemate stuff. Like, for example, here is a nice move. If blacks would would uh, move, I guess. Well, I yeah. So this position is one of those few cases where mm. you can make a draw for black, and that is because of the unfortunate placement of the king and the queen and white's queen at this point. So um, usually. In case of a queen playing against a lone rook, um, those cases will end in draws unless the cases where the king cannot escape from checks because of a stalemate. Um, th those are more of exceptions. So this is one of those exceptions. Do you see why this is a draw? Yes, of course. You give endless checks on F, G, mm -hmm. and H. If the king ever would right. move to E, then we just put it, the rook on E. And if That's the king right. goes too close meaning on the G line, wherever mm -hmm. the king is, we just give a check on G. We can also give a check on H. The king is never allowed to take it because that's stalemate. Exactly. So uh, this was more of an exception position where um, the rook can make a draw because of the stalemate, but the regular uh, way to win this for the side with the queen, so is to get to this type of position, which is called the Philidor position. So Philidor is something you hear <laughs> oh in rook end, yes. in rook end games too, right? I thought everything is a Philidor position. Or exactly. Well, I guess he spent a lot of time on end games back in the day, and he was the first one to do so, or the first one to hmm. record it somewhere so that we can find it. And uh, he did um, make all of these contributions to end game uh, to end games which is why we know some of those typical end game positions under his name so um i find that very often 
um, the rook against the queen uh, type of endgame, just this, um, just let's say it doesn't have to be this position, but just the idea of winning with a queen against the rook is often not really, not really taught to us because we just see some puzzles where, you know, uh, let's say a rook endgame where it just ends at the time where the other person gets the queen, right? The person gets the queen and it's, it's just said, the puzzle is just said to be over. And, um, I've always thought that those aren't as simple as they look uh, because you can very easily, I think, give 50 checks and uh, not really find a way to, to make a progress. So one of the positions to aim for is this one, mm -hmm. where, of course, you want the, the opponent's king to be in the corner. That's usually what we want for him to, less, to have less options. And, of course, if the opponent is... Um, also knows some defensive strategies, he's going to keep his rook right next to the king to mm -hmm. avoid all the checks. So this is one of those positions which is indeed w easily winning for white, and this is something you want to aim for. So now why it's winning for white is something that you have to tell me. You and Try to find what you would play next for white. How do we... Uh, why is this position the one that we aim for? I will tell you. So we can get um, our queen on a diagonal where it can go from one side to the other and the rook has to defend at one point and then the rook cannot defend from the other side. So that sounded a bit weird, but let me try to explain it easier. <laughs> uh, queen e5 check. Okay. Now, obviously, the rook cannot go in between and the king cannot go to c8 because that's a checkmate on e8. So the king has to move to a7 or a8. Right. So yeah. this doesn't work. Um, let's say a7. Let's say a7. Now I would go to... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why isn't this working as I thought? I thought it would. <laughs> um, now, <laughs> now it gets harder. <laughs> why? Why? Wait a second. We're at the same position again. Oh no. Huh? I thought I thought I had it already. I didn't. I thought about giving a check on a one. Okay. Uh, yeah. That that's fine. Yeah, it is fine. That's the But problem. then what? Well, it, it doesn't work. I wanted to give another check on h8 because I thought at one point the king has to go to a8, but the king doesn't have to go to a8. Okay, let me try something different. Let's go mm -hmm. from the starting position again. Aha, okay, so... I mean, you gave all the right checks at the beginning, but it's okay. <laughs> you might want to. We can we can still stay at the starting position and try to and try to think about it. So, what do we want? What what are we looking for here? What do we want the opponent to do? I want to have the king on a eight, and okay. the rook to defend on b eight or a seven, so I can go to the other side and give a checkmate like that. Okay, so I think it's it would be kind of lucky if you get a, if you get the opponent to defend that oh. way, but I don't think there's ever a way where you can make the rook go back there because the king will always go to like let's say a seven, right? Whenever you give it a check, so I think yeah, that's there's the no way to forcibly get to the position that you're talking about, but it would of course be be a win so we want the rook to move away honestly anywhere wherever it moves we're going to find the double check just whenever the rook goes somewhere far even you don't even have to Whoa. see every option you just know that there is going to be a check that ends up winning this rook okay so does that make uh, the solution any closer i i am i so now I'm thinking about uh, king move. 
d6. King d6, I think, would not be. It doesn't would help. Not sorry. Be it. No, it's no. it's not working. Have you? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm always asking the people who are watching, but have you ever had a position like this before? And could Me? you ever convert it? Yeah, you yourself too. No, I no, I haven't. Um, have I haven't had a position where I had a queen against the rook where I had to win that? Um, but luckily, me neither. Yeah, <laughs> I would have but been in a bit of I think it's um, yeah, it's, it's usually, but but it can it it can happen more often than um, than you think it does, especially yeah, just only the queen against rook. I haven't seen it that much, but I've seen the like rook and um, like the f seven pawn. That one I've seen a few times in like tournaments um, and just games somewhere around. I have seen that. Um, but this one, no, I don't think I've personally ever played this. Maybe something online. That's completely possible. But in a real game, no. And I I don't know if I would be stressed. I mean, after knowing this Philidor position, I don't think it's that... Um, yeah, at least you have something to aim for. But if I didn't know the winning technique, I would I would be so scared. Knowing yeah. that it's winning, and then Failing. the thought of not winning it would just be <laughs> just be sad. So, okay, let's go back. Check e5. Mm -hmm. Good check. He's going to play here. Now, check c5. I mean, sure, that doesn't really It doesn't change. make any difference. Yeah, okay. You just need to see the final idea and then it will make a difference. Okay, let's go here. When... There is a reason why I, I kept going it. back to the actually to the beginning position. So yep, why you have this to help is the ideal? Here. Why this is the ideal position. Yeah. That's Imagine um, so in this case, imagine it was black to move. Okay. Uh, uh, whatever happens. Well, okay, let's go to H7, I guess. With the rook. And, and already that means that the rook has left its, yes. its spot, right? So then you do your queen e5 check. And king goes to, let's say, of course, not to c8, because that would be too easy. So the king goes to a8. Then we play queen a1, king b8, queen b1. And we win the rook. Okay, you're, you look very confused. But I, my point is, can you imagine this position from um, as being black to move? Do you see why we want to get this? As block to move because then the rook has to leave its yes its and then we can start looking for the checks and ways to win this rook okay aha uh -huh. okay okay yeah so but... how do we get this as a zugzwang from the white side let's start with queen e5 as we already did okay <laughs> so What's next? well how about then uh no this is also not working everything is working if you well, want to Queen d5? Not necessary either. No, it's not working. It was the very first line you've mentioned to me way earlier. Queen a1. Yep, queen a1. So now the king has to go to b8. There is no other choice. Yes. And? Now... Ah! Oh! <laughs> 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 Gosh, I must be a horrible student, Svetlana. No. I, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm stunned of how patient you are. I'm sorry for everybody at home that it took me. No, that you're long. doing good. Don't worry about it at all. I apologize. I hope you skipped forward this little part, maybe. If, unless you haven't found it out yourself, be honest. Write in the comment, I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know what to move now. Oh, yeah, so there we have it, our position. Wonderful.
exactly just made so a triangulation with the queen more or less exactly so that's what it's called when you want the exact position you have but with the opponent's move and luckily when you have a queen that's fairly simple to do because of all the different checks that you can give and you can get there eventually even if it doesn't take you three moves here and it takes you a bit longer to figure it out as long as it takes you less than 50 moves to figure it out it should be fine <laughs> the funniest so, part is that i named the first two moves correctly it's crazy yeah and you did it immediately but you just didn't see the i you uh, just didn't know that you yeah. were supposed to get this position with black to move yeah but you told me and then i forgot about it and then i just the brain this uh, is fantastic i love it so the brain mm -hmm. thinks like okay no this didn't work so we put this aside and we do right. not think about it think about new solutions and then i mm -hmm. even started it again but that yeah anyway yeah very interesting <laughs> so this is these, like very sp key positions so you don't even need to know um like a bunch of different solutions to this let's say queen against rook you just need to know one key position that you want to get to mm -hmm. such as this one the philidor position and um you'll be able to win at any time it arises as long as you um yeah, move towards the goal of getting this position. It can work from any side. It can be in any corner. So this is just one of them. And as long as you remember this one, it should work. So now uh, your Rook H7 suggestion is met with what I mentioned. We can win the Rook in different ways. For example, this one, Queen to A1. And now the Rook can't cover oh. because of the Queen H8. Okay, now I finally also see it, yes. And yeah, yeah, this is, this is actually the position I had in mind, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, this is yeah. the position you had in mind. So ah. the king being on a8 and the rook covering. But usually the way we win the rook is by just making a yeah, by, by making a fork and that would be it. So yeah, wherever the rook moves, you're going to find the let's say the the rook moves to b1, can you find the way to winning this rook? Somehow, this surely. Moves. So I guess it's um well, let me think. Mm. Check, 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 uh, check. Oh, it's not that easy. Well, what about queen e5 check first? Okay, let's go queen e5. I'll play king here. <laughs> then we go queen to... D4. Okay. Sounds good. King A8, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Then we go to... Damn it, my king is in the way. It's annoying. Oh, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, queen H8. Good. It's the same queen motive H8. again. And now Queen H7. Exactly. So... Basically, what you need to know is that no matter where the rook moves, you're going to find that yes. sequence. Once the rook is away from the king, there's going to be somewhere uh, a fork, and uh, this is why this is exactly why this position is winning. So, and this is why the best technique, if you're on the defensive side, which I hope you won't be, but if you ever are on the defensive side of this, uh, you want to keep the king and the rook as close as you can, and avoid going to the corner for as long as possible and try to make the 50 move rule and hope that the opponent uh, doesn't know some of this um, this exact position that he needs to get to and uh, force your rook to move <laughs> so yeah this was the um, this was the method to winning the queen against uh, against rook it's yeah it includes the zugzwang and the triangulation tool that you that you mentioned so you pass the obligation to move to the opponent and then of course just find the double attack somewhere which if you know it's there it'll be it'll be easier to find and this is standard for every single rook against queen uh, rook against queen ending with or without pawns these ideas exist all the time we see zugs wings and double attacks always and that's how those are the defensive techniques and the winning techniques I learned so, a lot today. I really did. Some very, very, okay. yeah, things you have to know, kind of, but you actually really st still never learned them. It gives you a new perspective. You think about some moves which you didn't think before. Once again, I apologize for my uh, 
long, long uh, part about how to checkmate. I yeah, if I would have had the situation, I would have been very frustrated probably because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have managed to do this. And I think it is important enough to to understand it at least one time. I think I won't forget it ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a good part. So I hope. All right, I think that's that's the nice part about yes. some of these positions which is why you only try to show the key ones because you don't need to know every single exactly. position you just need to know one and why it's winning <sighs> thanks a lot Svetlana these were yeah. freaking smart moves this was one of the smartest episodes <laughs> so <laughs> far <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it too at home. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, by the way, if you're writing a comment, I will try to read everything and also answer. Just uh, taking a bit more care uh, of the YouTube channels. Wishing you all a beautiful time and see you soon. Bye-bye.